Kevin Durant and the Brooklyn Nets fell just short of achieving their goal of getting to the Eastern Conference Finals in a grueling seven-game loss to the Milwaukee Bucks. As many of us know, Durant was balling. He was exceptional. Oftentimes, looked like the best player of that series. I say maybe what? It, it was close. Maybe three games of the series, Durant looked like the best player. Maybe four, Giannis looked like the best player. It's close. Or maybe Durant looked like the best player for four. Giannis for three, it's really close between those two gentlemen on how they looked on that basketball court. Uh, they were both incredible. And Giannis was able to get past Durant in the Nets. And often, and obviously he went on to win a championship. But for Durant and Brooklyn, what do they need to do? Because I think it's clear as day they need to do something. And, and I got, you know, behind the scenes I've been talking to people, and I, and I actually think trading Harden or Kyrie shouldn't be off the table. Because, like, because of injuries, it was, it was weird this season. Pretty much you never really seen Harden, Kyrie, and KD on that court for a five-game stretch. And honestly, I do believe when these gentlemen start playing, I'm talking about night in, night out, and hopefully next year we're able to see these three immensely talented guys play together night in, night out. I think over time somebody's going to get mad, and I don't know who. I can see it going either which way, either one of these guys. KD obviously has... The the to me at least the least of the egos, but then between Harden and Kyrie, we'll see what happens. Now the Brooklyn Nets turn their attention toward the offseason, right? Disappointing year one, injuries plagued them. What do you do if you're Brooklyn with these three max contract guys on your roster? Like, how do you improve this team? Because you need to do it for the cheap and it needs to be smart. And you need to go get glue guys that make sense, that that add to the team. Apparently, one of the moves that the Nets could potentially make is bringing in one of Kevin Durant's recent foes. All right? If you watch that nets Bucks series, that was really good. You saw P.J. Tucker with the assignment of Kevin Durant. And let's be clear, he didn't have a, a you know, for the most part, Durant had his way, but there were a couple of games where Tucker was able to limit Durant. And when I say limit, anything under 35 points to me is limiting Kevin Durant. We know what he could do night in, night out. Apparently, there are reports that the Brooklyn Nets might go after P.J. Tucker. And it makes a lot of sense. I wouldn't be surprised one bit if this move happens. If, if the Nets got anywhere close to the money that Milwaukee's got, I think you see P.J. Tucker in Brooklyn. What do I call it? Brooklyn Black? Brooklyn Silver? Whatever. I think it, I think that move happens because uh, you look at P.J. Tucker, you know, he's got all the admiration and respect for KD. James Harden, one of his closest friends. He just won a championship with, with Milwaukee. I think he increased his stock and his value once again, kind of removing himself at Houston and rebranding re himself as a, a guy that's just going to give it everything he's got again. Um, I, I, I think, you know, his job is done in Milwaukee. I don't see Milwaukee giving them long-term money. If anything, I think they're going to turn their attention to more or less bringing Bobby Portis back. I think there's a great chance P.J. Tucker jumps ship, and I wouldn't be surprised one bit if he goes to Kevin Durant, a guy that he's, he's that's a good friend of his. You know, their foes on the court, but that's a good friend of his. And joins you know, James Harden, probably his closest friend in the NBA, in the Brooklyn Nets. I think that move is going to happen. I don't know anything, but I'm just telling you I think that one's going to happen. There are reports surfacing that that is the talk, that the, that P.J. Tucker might land himself once he gets done partying in Milwaukee because he's been partying. I mean, he he's making sure he celebrates. Oh, he's partying. Once he gets done and free agency starts, I wouldn't be surprised one bit if he ends up in Brooklyn 36 years of age. It just depends on how much money he wants to make right now. Meaning, I don't think there's $10 million a year for him, and I don't think there's a deal out there more than two years for him, but he might be able to get eight, seven, eight a year. Would, would Brooklyn be willing to do that? You know, would Brooklyn be willing to use, you know, depending on what happens with Spencer, Dan Whitty, would, would Brooklyn be willing to do that for, for P.J. Tucker? We'll see. I think he could add to that team. I think they need defenders. They need glue guys, tough guys. Guys that's going to be able to call out. One thing with Tucker that you got to realize is he's got the respect of the room, no matter who's in the room. Like, KD will listen to Tucker. James Harden will listen to Tucker. So that, that's a big deal. He ain't afraid to call out Kyrie over a couple bad shots. I think a guy like that makes sense in Brooklyn.